Hey everyone, recently I upgraded my graphics card and I sold my old one to my brother-in-law, Adam, and I was walking him through the process of kind of reading windows of the old driver over the phone. And I realized if this helps him out, then I should probably make a video about it because I have a specific kind of process that have culminated over the years that basically wipes windows clean of any old remnants of graphics drivers and starts kind of new. And basically it's great for installing a new graphics card or if you're having issues with your current graphics card and you kind of suspect that the driver is the issue, well, this can also help with that. Honestly, it's probably a good idea every once in a while at least to do a full clean wipe of the driver and then start fresh with a new driver install. So I'm gonna walk you through that process. It's really straightforward. It's not anything super special. It's just something that I've been using for the past five or six years and it's never failed me. So sorry for the long intro, let's dive in here. So first I wanna download a free software called Display Driver Uninstaller. And we can do a little Google search right here. So this is going to be either Wagnerdsoft or you can download it from GitHub. But Wagnerdsoft is where it is hosted. So we have the latest version here. We'll go ahead and download that. I wanna go ahead and uh, not click on any of these kind of ads here that are fake. We'll scroll down here and we'll go to here and download from here. This is our download page here. And we'll go ahead and just download this to the desktop. I've created a folder for this video, but you could save it anywhere you want, doesn't matter. So save that there. The other piece of free software, and this is gonna be optional for some people, but for me, I always use it. We're gonna look up Custom Resolution Utility Toasty X. Click the first link there. This is the monitor tests link. This is the one that you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and download this one, the CRU 1.5.3.zip. Save it to that same folder. And then finally, I want to go and download my graphics card driver from NVIDIA. I'm gonna go to nvidia.com, I'll go to drivers. I'm on the 50 series, 5070 Ti, Windows 11, find. Okay, and I'm gonna download the latest game ready driver. I don't use a studio driver on this machine because it's basically just a gaming PC. So I'm gonna go and click on the view uh, button there and I'll just click on download here and I'm gonna download that right into my driver video folder. All right, so those are both downloaded. You see my OBS recording there. And I apologize in advance, this is gonna be kind of a mixture of screen recordings as well as off-screen footage because I am not capturing this through another computer. So if I'm <laughs> restarting, I obviously can't do a screen recording here. So I'm gonna go into my driver video folder. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the DDU setup.exe. We'll go ahead and install this. Click on next. Scroll through, I agree. We'll install it to the default folder there. I'm not gonna run it just yet. I'm not gonna show the readme either. And then I'm gonna also go ahead and unzip the CRU folder and then double click on that. So we have everything in here. I would suggest either leaving this in the folder that you downloaded it to, or you can move it to a different folder like your documents, your video, what have you, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you know where it is. So if you wanna access it later, I'm gonna go ahead and do one other thing here. I'm gonna right click on my network and internet settings, click on the network and internet settings at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go to advanced network settings and I'm gonna disable my network. So I have just ethernet on here, but if you have Wi-Fi, disable that as well. The reason we're doing this is when we reboot after we do the display driver uninstaller, Windows by default will try to download whatever driver it has in their, in their kind of system. And that could be three, four, five months old, and we don't want that. We want the latest driver. We want to control that. So by disabling the internet, we're not allowing Windows to connect to their Windows update servers and try to download a graphics driver. Now we can go in here, we'll find DDU, display driver, uninstaller, right here. It's gonna tell you that if this is the first time that you've launched, it's gonna go through. I would suggest reading all of this. So click okay. We're gonna go through here under general options. Create a system restore point if allowed. I would definitely recommend keeping that enabled. I'm also gonna go ahead and click on remove physics. And if you'd like to try to keep the global NVIDIA settings, you can click on this. I typically just 
run through and just change all the settings that I need to real quick. It's not a big deal. If you're on AMD, I would highly suggest clicking on remove C AMD driver folders because what happens with AMD drivers is they unpack the driver installation file into that folder and then they don't delete it afterwards. So you wanna make sure that that's deleted. A couple of advanced options here. So we've already disabled the internet, so we don't need to worry about this. I just find that disabling the internet is better than ticking this. However, we do want to enable the safe mode dialog. And this says not recommended until you tested safe mode manually. Now, obviously, if you know how to get to safe mode, you can test it. I've never had a problem going into it. We want to use this in safe mode because if we try to do anything outside of safe mode, it's going to warn us. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna go back and open it again. And we're gonna get a little launch option here and we can basically tell it, let's boot into safe mode. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I got everything ready. I got my driver, in, uh, my driver downloaded. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the safe mode. It's gonna to try to create a system restore point. We're going to reboot into safe mode here. All right, so we've rebooted into safe mode and DDU has pulled right up. And here's where we can get rid of all the remnants of the old driver. So I'm gonna go ahead on the right side and choose select device type. It's a GPU, it's an NVIDIA. And here we want to click on clean and restart. And basically this is gonna go through the process of deleting the old driver. If you have the NVIDIA app, it's also going to get rid of that. It's going to clean the registry and everything. So basically one click and it's removed all the old files. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I doing this when I know that the new NVIDIA driver has a clean installation option? Well, that is a step in the right direction from NVIDIA. I think AMD also has something similar. However, it doesn't get everything. It doesn't get everything that DDU gets. So I like to do this still. It's never failed me. I really, really think that this is probably the best way, especially if you're having issues. This is definitely the first step that I would take to resolving those issues. So we've booted back into Windows here. Now we want to install the new driver. And I have it right here. I'm gonna click on the icon. You're gonna get a smart screen can't be reached right now message, most likely. Just click on run. We've downloaded this directly from NVIDIA. We're not worried about viruses or any, any weirdness going with that. So we're good to go there. We're gonna let it go through its process by uh, unpacking. This takes a lot to unpack. All right, so here we are at the main screen and this is gonna be up to you. I never use the NVIDIA app. I use OBS to screen record. I rarely take screenshots. So I'm just gonna go with the graphics driver, but you're more than welcome to use the NVIDIA app. No worries there. I'm gonna click on agree and continue. I'm gonna go to custom. And this is just so we could see what is being installed here. We're not doing the NVIDIA app. This is the option I was talking about before, perform a clean installation. We don't need to worry about that because we've already used DDU. And again, this does not get everything anyway, which is why we don't use it. I am going to click on next and it's going to start the install. Now you may see some display flickering and stuff like that. That's fine, that's completely normal. Your display may blink out for a second, like mine does, and you, you'll probably see it here in a second. And this does take a moment, it's not instantaneous but honestly just sit and relax until it is done. Boom, there we go. My display blanked out for a second, should come back. Okay, so we're gonna click on close. So for the custom resolution utility, where I can't even say it, I double click on this. It's gonna say smart screen can't be reached right now. I'm gonna go in here to the CTA 861 extension blocks and I'm gonna click on edit. And you notice we have a few different options here. I'm gonna click on TV resolutions and I'm gonna click on edit. And here are the ones we want to delete. This 4096 by 2160 is technically true full 4K. The problem is a lot of games don't support it. It can do some weird things with reconstruction technologies like DLSS or FSR. And so I just right off the get go delete these from this list. So I'm gonna delete any 4096 resolution I see in here, which I think there's about eight of them total. I'm gonna click okay. And then I'm gonna go to HDMI support because there's one in here, right down here at 24 Hertz. So I'm gonna delete that one. I'm gonna click okay, click okay, and click okay. We can do one of these restarts. I'm just gonna do a system restart. I've always found that that's just a little easier.
So now that the computer's restarted, I'm gonna go into my NVIDIA control panel by right-clicking, show more options in NVIDIA control panel. It's gonna say agree and continue. Right from the get-go, I'm gonna change something so I can start the screen recording because otherwise it can kind of get a little wonky here. So I'm gonna go into my change resolution. By default, it's gonna go up here to the Ultra HD. We don't want that because we see we our refresh rates maxed out to 60 Hertz. And again, this is just specifically for Nvidia. This uh, will be different on AMD and Intel, I'm sure. So I'm gonna scroll down this list for resolution and go to PC find 3840 by 2160 and now you'll see we have 100 and 120. Before I click on apply, I'm gonna click on use NVIDIA color settings. All right, we'll see the display blank out there. And I'm gonna go ahead and set up G-Sync as well. And I'm just gonna click on enabled for windowed and full screen mode too. All right, so we're in here, we have that all set up. I'm gonna go to video image settings and I always click on these here, up to you guys. This is completely optional. I'm gonna go to change or configure surround physics. 5070 Ti, click apply. Go to my adjust image settings with preview. Let me make this window a little bit bigger. I'm gonna use my preference emphasizing performance. I'm gonna click apply, and then I'm gonna use the advanced 3D settings, and then I'm gonna go manage 3D settings. I basically selected performance here because this makes it so we don't have to change a ton of stuff. Everything here we're gonna leave on default except for the view settings that I'm gonna change. Anisotropic filtering, 16X, I always default to that. We're gonna go max frame rate, I'm gonna set a max frame rate of 116. And basically because we're using G-Sync, we wanna set our max frame rate three or four frames lower than our actual frame rate or refresh rate. So that way anything that goes over that won't cause screen tearing. Scroll down a little further, OpenGL rendering GPU, select our GPU, texture filtering, negative LOD bias, we'll change over to allow and our texture filtering quality will go to high performance. I've never seen a visual difference between the two. Vertical sync, we will turn on. And I know people are like, don't use V-Sync. For G-Sync, you want V-Sync turned on. You can Google it, you can look into it. You want V-Sync on. It's part of the whole core of G-Sync and it's actually required for G-Sync to work properly. I'm gonna also change virtual reality pre-rendered frames to use a 3D application setting, and I'm gonna click apply. That's pretty much it. We can go ahead and re-enable our internet settings by clicking on the little globe down here, network and internet settings, advanced network settings, and enable. So the last couple things I would recommend checking are your sound settings. So right click on the speaker, sound settings, we have the LG TV set as the output device, which is good. And I have my Dolby Atmos for home theater selected. That is perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the screen recording here so I could show you the next part. And then we also want to check our display settings for HDR. So you see HDR is currently turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. So with HDR turned on, we can go in here and make sure that the auto HDR is turned off or on depending on what you prefer. SDR content, you can use this slider to change the way SDR our content looks to your preference and taste. The other thing we wanna do is make sure that our peak brightness is displayed properly. Now you see right here, it says peak brightness 800 nits. That's perfect. If you do not see this, you can download a free program from Windows or from the Microsoft Store, I believe, called the HDR Calibration, which I have right here. And this will basically just open up this little calibration window. We'll run through real quick how to set this up properly. So on the first screen, basically drop this all the way down to darker. If you're on an OLED, if you're on an LED, I don't believe it matters, but you want this as dark as possible. On the next screen, you want to basically make it so these squares disappear. And I know for me on my LG C1, 800 is the proper setting here is 800 nits. And same for this one here, 800 nits. You boop. Next, I always just leave this at default and you can name it whatever you want to name it. I just leave it at the default as well and click on finish. It will tell you that it saved successfully. And then now if we go back to display, we can see that this is the profile that has been saved. And that is it. That is the entire process that I always use for installing a new graphics card, updating my driver. Yes, I'm kind of a masochist. I do this for every driver update because I've never had issues doing it this way. And I can often run into issues if I just keep installing drivers over and over and over again on top of the old driver. 
So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I'm sorry it was maybe a little winded, but I kind of wanted to dive into every setting and just show you my process. It's a pretty simple process once you get down to it. It's not really too difficult. And honestly, I've memorized it, so I don't even have to reference notes or anything. So if you guys found this video helpful, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Also, if you enjoyed this type of content, you want more gaming content from me, please let me know in the comment section below. I know this is called Home Theater Gamer and I predominantly cover home theater, but I do wanna start covering more gaming content. I do know that some of you have asked for Windows optimization guides. I'm looking into making something like that. Uh, I do have my ways of doing things with Windows there. I wanna make as fully featured of a video as I can for you guys. So anyway, thank you guys for sticking around and I appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video.